Here's the problem. You've been out there a long time prospecting all day long, and you bend over. Your back is killing you. You're trying to find those weak radiation spots coming from the ore on the ground there. And your back is just killing you. It's just up and down, up and down all day. And here is your answer. It's a scintillator probe. You simply walk along with it held about a foot or so off the ground, six inches to a foot. It'll pick up radiation that is weaker than can be detected with the ordinary probe, the ordinary Geiger-Muller tube probe. The scintillator could be the answer. It takes all the back-breaking work out of it. You just simply walk along, reading your meter. And it's so sensitive, it uh, just picks up weak signals. There you go, right there, pegging off the meter almost. I got four, four uranium samples laid out on the ground here as a test to see how it works. And it's working great. I can't wait to use this out in the actual uh, field where the uranium ore lives. It doesn't live in my backyard. I do have some samples laid out. And that is working very well, I would say. So scintillator may be the answer, especially if it's a DIY project like this one. Now let's take a look at how I built it. Okay, what this is is my scintillator, a gamma sensitive scintillator. And I got the kit to build this from a place called IRAD Inc. I-R-A-D Incorporated. IRAD Inc. and you can find them on eBay. And they're located in Stewart, Florida. And this is a nice little kit here. First of all, in the final product, I've got one of these water bottle mesh holders, which I got just to hold the, the scintillator. It has a strap like this, and you can just hang it down as you walk along with it near the ground. That's really all you need. And the inside, the inner workings of my little makeshift uh, housing come with the kit itself and it does not furnish the uh, housing although you can buy a nice machined aluminum housing for it but uh, I chose uh, not to get that right away I thought I'd just make something temporary which I did and as it turned out two Progresso soup cans of all things is like a perfect fit for this three inch diameter plastic cylinder that has to fit inside of here it's almost a perfect fit for it so Considering the perfect fit and then some foam packing in here and you've got a really solid little gizmo. It comes with a great set of instructions. It comes with all the parts. When I show you the video of the build, you'll understand what I mean. But uh, it's very complete instructions and uh, with even has uh, diagrams, pictures. And not only that, but uh, you can look it up on the uh, on the website and see it there where you can magnify if you need to. Even an even better set. But this is a great little uh, gamma sensitive scintillator. It makes uh, when you're out prospecting it's much better than using just the the handheld normal sensor because this is more sensitive from a longer distance. It's not as discriminating but you can uh, locate things quicker and then you can kind of home in and focus in on them with the uh, other one if you want to with your regular sensor and it would work with uh, any kind of a rate meter that's uh, 900 volts or above I first tried it with one of the old uh, yellow Victorine I think it's a uh, model 700 uh, rate meter that they used back in the 60s and maybe through the 70s in civil defense installations and uh, it would not work with that because it did not have a high enough voltage, but it works great with this Ludlum Model 3. So let's get into the actual build of the Gamma Scintillator. These parts comprise the kit that I got to build the scintillator. It comes from uh, a place uh, on eBay called IRAD Incorporated. IRAD Inc. I-R-A-D-I-N-C. Stewart, Florida. Comes with all the pieces you need. This is the main scintillator plastic here. It's a compound and a plastic matrix that uh, 
is sensitive to gamma rays. When the gamma ray penetrates this, it causes a photon of light uh, to flash. It'd be, if you could visualize it, probably like thousands of sparkles, like kind of like looking up at the sky on a starry night. But they're very dim. And this is a photomultiplier tube that will be joined here. And it amplifies the um, tiny flashes of light, converts them to an electrical signal, and they come out here through this BNC connector, which will go to the Geiger counter, and it can be read, the rate. It'll be read like on a rate meter. And let's see what we have. We have, uh, this is a special silicone coupling compound, which we'll rub on here, and then we'll twist that on when we get ready for that point and it'll make a good uh, junction. We have the electrical parts, we have resistors and one capacitor that we're going to need right here. We're going to remove this little board, this little circuit board. It's not needed. It's for some other application that's not what we're doing with it. So comes with a good set of instructions, very detailed. I've read this over and I'm pretty much uh, up on what I need to do. And you can see when it's all done, it'll be, uh, the parts will be joined together in the tube. It looks like this. Uh, I have an idea for, an house, for a housing, uh, which I'll probably do. We'll see how that works out. But in the meantime, the first thing I have to do is uh, remove this circuit board, solder these resistors and the capacitor on, and go from there. Okay, the next step is I have to remove this circuit board from the end here, which we won't be using. And you notice there are several wires in here that connect it all. I've already snipped through all but one of them. Now that takes care of that one. Now let's see how this is going to come off. There we go. Okay, we don't need this piece at all. Now I have all these terminals marked. You notice this, I left as much wire as possible sticking out of these little studs here. Cathode, grid, anode, and then you got these dynodes one through nine. So we have two 20 mega ohm resistors, nine 10 mega ohm resistors that I have to uh, solder some of these connections following their directions here. I've got all the resistors and the one capacitor in place, uh, ready to solder all as one operation now. Uh, it looks kind of messy, but uh, when I get the uh, soldering done, I'll trim those ends off and check it again. Order. And that'll be the next a step. I'm just to stop and take a look at all the connections to be sure they're right. It's like check, recheck, and check again. Actually, this is about the third time I've done this, so I. Okay, now the next step, we get to solder the joints, the connections. Might as well stop, start with the grid right here. I'm glad I left enough wire sticking up from these little studs because the studs are stainless steel I think and they don't really solder.
this is what you might call kind of tedious right here. And when I finish this, I'll go back and cut off these loose, uh, the long wires sticking out. Clipping the last of the uh, little pigtails off of here. Looks a lot neater now. And I think what I'm going to do is it didn't show in the directions but I thought this might be a pretty good idea I took the old circuit board here and I cleaned off the old uh, parts drilled a couple of holes in here and these are the leads where the uh, connector will go to hook the cable to the Geiger counter and I'm going to run this through here and this one through here and glue this back down at these posts and what that'll do is uh, provide some protection for all the uh, resistors and the capacitor under there in case of you know any kind of pressure that might be on them because I'm going to put this in some type of a tube and it'll be kind of tightly packed so that's the way that will work I'm going to check these over one more time and then uh, we'll move on to the next stage tube for the time being. I glued the uh, old circuit board on top of here to act as a protective measure. Um, the BNC connector will go at the end of these two wires. So we'll set that aside for now. Now we're ready to move on to the stage of the scintillator itself. First I want to show you something interesting. Let me turn the lights off. So I turned on my black light and as you can see the plastic scintillator crystal fluoresces. Now, I don't know whether it's because of just the plastic itself or because of the organic compound that's uh, mixed in with the plastic which causes it to scintillate when a gamma ray hits it. But this uh, fluorescence is not the same as the uh, scintillation that occurs. I'll have to look this up and see what I can find out about that. Okay, next we must wash this thing thoroughly, this scintillator crystal, to get every trace of oil or grease that could be on here that would prevent the paint from sticking. And if anything will get the grease off, this Dawn Power Wash will do the job, no doubt about that. Now dry thoroughly with a lint-free microfiber cloth. All right, ready for the next step. The next step is to paint the scintillator crystal. This is the kind of paint recommended uh, in the directions. Zenser 123 Primer. 20% greater coverage. Here's the scintillator. I have one surface taped off and we're going to paint all the other surfaces. The surface that is not taped, that is taped rather, will go to the uh, photomultiplier tube. Okay, two days later now and I've went ahead and put two coats of paint on the uh, scintillator block here 
and I've got it cleaned up real good on the face of it with a lint free uh, little alcohol and a lint free cloth same with the photo multiplier tube I've uh, put the special silicone on here a pea size like I said and it's kind of spread out a little bit but there it is <clears throat> using gloves so as not to get uh, skin oil on the scintillator or the PMT now we're going to just place this on here and kind of twist it around to make a real good contact not sure how much twisting but I guess just to spread it out good Okay, now we're ready for the tape. Nine pieces of the, uh, this is regular vinyl black electrician's tape according to the directions. Nine inches long. Kind of stretch them down. Kind of stretch as you go. I've got the PMT standing up in a can here that I rigged up. So we just keep doing this. May want to take it all apart, who knows? So anyway, I'll continue to do that and be back a little in a little while. So far it's looking like this. I'm continuing the wrap all the way down to the end. This is my housing setup so far. Simply nothing but two tin cans with the scintillator plastic and the photo multiplier tube uh, stuck down into the can. It was almost a perfect fit. What I did here was took two cans. As you can see, the, the bottom is locked together like a fit. So what I did was cut the bottom out of one can, sealed it with this uh, black silicone for light uh, blocking. Uh, let it set overnight and there you have it we're gonna see how it all comes together okay this should be the final uh, product here it's funny how all this stuff just fits together you know all right this is nothing but a, a camera body cap which you can pick up most anywhere this is an old hood from a zoom lens an old Canon video camera and it just happens to fit almost perfectly right there so a little black silicone and then I'll make the electrical connection here and that will silicone itself down right there and we'll see how it works before I assemble it all together I'll, I've got more packing down in here and we'll pack that in and probably get some styrofoam and put in there so that it can't try to work its way out. It can fit tight and remain tight. Okay, here is the final product sitting on the bench here to give it a little test. It's getting about 1500 to 2000 counts per minute on the background. 
lot of it's coming from cosmic rays so I have here a piece of pitch blend that I found out near Moab Utah a couple years back a tiny little piece I'm gonna put it right here you see how it goes up so let's move it down a little closer just watch the dial That's pretty sensitive. You could hold this thing about a foot off the ground as you're walking along prospecting and get some results. This tiny little piece. I remember when I found this piece using the, the regular probe, uh, it was hard to find. But if I'd had this, it would not have been. Look at that. So let's put it right up next to it and see what happens. Taking off the meter, okay, let's move down to the 10. So we get about 38,000 counts per minute. Put it right next to it. Okay, now let's uh, turn this off and check uh, with the regular probe. Okay, we have the regular probe hooked up now. It's uh, this one right here. It's a Ludlum 44-9 probe, and I'm going to. I've only got. Uh, we're getting a background of uh, I don't know about 30 or so counts per minute. Okay, let's move this little piece of uh, uranium ore on up. Starting at the 12 inch mark. So you can tell that you'd have to get pretty close to this. Uh, you could be prospecting along and you could easily miss a piece like this. But with that scanner, different ball game okay let's switch to the other 10 scale Okay, let's go 100 scale. So it's about 60,000 counts per minute with the uh, regular Ludlum probe. 60,000 counts per minute. It's pretty hot little rock. Such a tiny little thing. Anyway, that's a little overview of how well the uh, scintillator works. Hope you enjoyed the video about the scintillator probe. It was kind of fun making the video, and I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, please subscribe, like, and feel free to share. See you on the next video. Thanks for watching.